All right, so let's start with the rapid fire. The first one is, at what age do you want to retire? <laughs> How long does it take you to get ready in the mornings? 30 minutes. Favorite color? Blue. What time of day are you most inspired? 7 to 8 in the morning. How many hours of sleep can you survive on? 5. Fill in the blank. An upcoming technology trend is blank. AI native networks. How do you relax? Uh, read. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? I don't drink coffee. A habit of yours that you hate? Uh, not doing any exercise. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Uh, what? Uh, one word description of your leadership style? Nurturing. Ideal vacation spot for relaxation. Island. Key factor for maintaining a work-life balance. Pause. All right, so that's the end of the rapid fire. Now we can go on the bigger, bigger questions. The first one is, uh, tell me about your role as the head of advanced network research at Samsung Research UK. Yeah, right. And so uh, I'm the uh, head of uh, advanced network research and um, uh, at the Samsung Research UK here, I lead a team of uh, really talented researchers working on the cutting edge technologies uh, for beyond 5G and the 6G networks. So having said it's beyond 5G and 6G, we do also have a flavor of uh, near term uh, research that looks into the immediate impact into the standards and uh, into the product. And for the longer term ones, uh, we're looking for uh, release 20 and beyond that sort of timeline. Yeah, so it's a mix of flavor of uh, near term and uh, uh, long-term research um, and yeah, that's what I do. What do you see as the role of AI in the telecommunications industry, especially as the chair of the AI expert working group of UKTIM? Yeah, so um, uh, I mean, uh, AI is a foundation for teleco transformation. Uh, I mean, over the past few years, we have observed the, you know, the network is getting more and more complex and uh, the network OPEX and CAPEX are increasing day by day. But at the same time, uh, the network revenue is uh, reducing. So, uh, I mean, the teleco operators are looking to reverse our trend by reducing the cost and also to expand the new revenue stream. Uh, this is where we do see uh, when AI is integrated fully into the network, you know, from operation to services and to the business level, where AI can provide leveraging the teleco as a platform. Uh, and then uh, the teleco can provide this AI-driven value-added services to the wider ecosystem and to help with uh, the widespread uh, adoption of AI across the, uh, the ecosystem. So in your role as the head of advanced network 6G research at Samsung UK, you lead a team focused on developing network architecture and AI native networks for beyond 5G and 6G. Can you share insights into the challenges your team encounters in driving innovation in telecommunications? Um, yeah, it's always about challenging the status quo, isn't it? I mean, if you are driving innovation, uh, you are making some changes to the existing system. Not all the changes are like the better one, uh, and uh, not all the, all the changes are correct. You know, there is definitely a risk of uh, what well, a balance between risk taking and uh, the uh, justification for the return of the investment. And when you are looking to do research uh, that spans such a extensive time frame, you know, from pretty much now to the next three, five, ten years, you really do need to. Uh, not only address the current need, but also understand what's coming next and be prepared for what's coming next. Um, so you need to stay ahead of the curve. You need to understand the, the emerging technology, the business aspects and uh, the future commercial feasibility. For example, some of the technologies may not be accommodated by the current system, but uh, they may have a great potential in the future. And um, so, yeah, I would say it's a, a, a mixed uh, combination of uh, the complexity of the technology, the um, business aspects, the interdisciplinary collaboration, uh, and from time to time, uh, resource constraint. Uh, but it's the intellectual stimulation behind it that makes the work really interesting. So as the chair of an AI expert working group at UKTIN, you play a pivotal role in identifying opportunities and gaps in the UK telco AI system. How does the working group contribute to fostering AI innovation? Yeah, so uh, 
Uh, the expert working group is uh, a group of uh, 15 members and uh, they come from uh, uh, industry, academia, research institute, SMEs. Uh, and what we did uh, is uh, we worked together with uh, extensive discussions and debates among ourselves to identify the opportunities and challenges of uh, uh, future AI capabilities uh, in teleco and with an uh, angle for UK ecosystem. So what we have uh, uh, discovered is that at the moment, uh, uh, you know, there are lots of uh, acceleration and advancement of AI application to the network. But they are also quite fragmented in the sense that, you know, the AI models can be trained by different data sets from different vendors in different environments. Uh, and we do think uh, uh, there is uh, this opportunity to uh, have uh, a more unified uh, framework and approach to address uh, AI in telco. This is why we made a recommendation of uh, a future network platform and the innovation program on top of it. Uh, and uh, to boost the innovation to help uh, uh, to overcome the barriers on, on, for example, data and computational resources uh, and uh, to allow everyone to co-innovate, uh, cooperate and co-experiment uh, the AI capabilities in telecom network. We published the paper uh, right before Mobile World Congress and yeah, do have a look and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, could you share your thoughts on the importance of recognizing women's contributions to technology and how it impacts the overall diversity of thought in the industry? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't stress enough um, how important it is to have this diverse and uh, inclusive uh, working environment. And, uh, I mean, um, it is important for the team's morale, for the productivity, uh, and also for the well-being of uh, the team and organization. Uh, I think the organization and, and the hair management really do need to understand that, you know, this is not just about taking a box or providing a nice report with a more balanced number, uh, but this is more about tapping into the wisdom of the uh, the other half of the talent pool. Uh, and I'm not even saying this from a woman perspective. Uh, imagine if you have a team uh, with all extroverts uh, where the introverts don't feel like comfortable to contribute, you will lose that sort of aspect and uh, you lose uh, that sort of uh, uh, creativity. Um, yeah, so that's why I think uh, it's so important to have the visibility of uh, women and the representation of uh, women at all levels, especially at the, the leadership level, because uh, uh, our next generation goes, if they see all the men VPs, men directors, uh, men chief engineers, uh, well, at the same time, they see few women who are successful in this field. They are not going to join the industry. So as someone passionate about AI and connectivity, you mentioned that the network must be right to achieve the full potential of AI. Can you elaborate on the symbiotic relationship between AI and connectivity in the context of 6G? Yes, uh, um, I think I said that in uh, TM Forum DTW 2023, uh, but I think the idea emerged much earlier than that. Uh, the rationale behind it is uh, at the moment there are lots of AI solutions and uh, AI advancement uh, in addressing network issues, right? For example, to reduce network operational efficient uh, cost, uh, to enhance efficiency, and uh, to improve customer service. Uh, but at the same time, we do see there are still challenges for the network to better support AI. Uh, for example, these AI models, they, uh, they are developed individually and they need to work together and uh, they need to be fully integrated into the network uh, across the network end to end. So that requires the network to be able to support the collaboration interaction of the AI models, uh, share of the data and uh, the AI models across the network for the AI to work uh, efficiently. That means to pull the right uh, communication and computational resources. Uh, and uh, when AI uh, are fully integrated in the network, and this is where I believe the network is becoming the platform to host the data intelligence, communication, and computational resources, and is able to provide that AI-empowered uh, value-added services uh, to the third party and offer it to the wider, uh, wider ecosystem to the other sectors. So do you believe the telecommunications industry has fully embraced AI? or are there areas that still need more widespread integration and exploration? Um, yeah, well, um, I think there is definitely a excitement in the industry to embrace AI. Uh, I mean, if you think of uh, five years ago, when we started to talk about using AI in the network, we get lots of questions challenging on the feasibility and the benefits of uh, using AI. You know, uh, what about the security 
aspects of AI, what about the uh, uh, ethics, uh, uh, what about the risk of AI, what if AI messes up the network, right? Um, but we made progress and uh, we started to deploy the AI solutions into the network uh, and starting to see the benefit uh, AI for energy saving is one of the compelling examples where we are able to see 20 to 30 percent of energy uh, consumption reduction in the network, uh, which maps to the operator's electric bill uh, and maps to the their carbon footprint. Uh, but I think uh, there are still quite a, a, a bit of challenges ahead uh, in order for us to achieve that vision of uh, AI native network. Uh, in the sense that uh, uh, at the moment uh, the AI solutions are still developed uh, on a use case by use case perspective, uh, and uh, they are addressed uh, like individually uh, and uh, in a, a quite frankly, a fragmented manner, and the integration of AI is going to be a significant challenge. And the cost of uh, AI training uh, is also going to be a significant challenge and the computational resources. And um, so uh, I think, yeah, the industry is definitely embracing AI, but there are still um, a journey to go uh, in order for us to fully embrace AI. All right. Uh, so the last question for you is of a personal kind. What would you be doing in your life if not this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I've been doing this for my life. <laughs> I don't know. Teaching? Anything? No, you don't know. Not really. <laughs> I am you on the head of uh, advanced network research uh, in Samsung Research. Catch me on the Technology of the Month broadcast. <laughs>